Happy Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving time, guys, and I'm ready for Christmas. So that's why, you know, I have a little bit of decoration going on. And I'm a Christmas person, you know. I'm a I love the Christmas holiday. I think it's an actual holiday. Whereas Thanksgiving is more like a day. Like, you know what I mean? You don't set up and like put up stuff for Thanksgiving, you know? But it's a good time and I got my brother and his girl coming in. Uh, They're actually here today. They got in this morning from San Diego and excited to see them. But there's there's a catch. Me and the wife had to get tested for COVID. So it depends what happens with that, if I get to see everyone or not. But... It is what it is, and, you know, you deal with it as it's given to you, and you get through it, you adapt to the situation, like I always talk about, and, you know, I don't know, see what ha- see where we go from there. But, yeah, I want to start this off on a good note, and just say happy Thanksgiving, and, you know, just, I appreciate you tuning in, and I just hope you'll enjoy all the delicious food. You're about to partake in, and yeah, let's get the show started. Here we go. Thanksgiving. What does Thanksgiving mean to you? You know, I I sent out that question on social media and I wanted to hear what y'all thought. I wanted to know what other people think. You know, because for me, Thanksgiving is really about my family. It's really about getting us together and just been able to, I don't know, just come together and be around each other. No matter what the conversation is, no matter if we're just sitting around watching TV. I think it's just being around each other, you know. Uh, my family, we don't we don't get together too much, you know, other than like birthdays and holidays like this. And I think the food is just extra. You know, a lot of people told me food. A lot of told me. A lot of people told me uh, the love of being around your family and your loved ones. You know, people traveling in from other states and stuff like that. You know, we're in a risky time for that right now, and it sucks. You know, but I'm sure there are a lot of people still doing it. You know, my my brother and his girlfriend Haley. Just came in from San Diego. You know, they did get tested before they came. So, it was all good. And, I don't know. I mean, it's just a, it's a time to, I would say a time to give thanks. You know, but, I just, I give thanks every day. You know, and... I don't know. It just doesn't uh it doesn't do too much for me in that aspect because, you know, I'm thankful for everything every day. Everything that I have, you know, I praise God and I give him the glory and I give him thanks 
because of everything, every situation he's put me in, every opportunity he's given to me. And, um, yeah, I, it's just, I'm always thankful for every little thing, you know, and the pandemic shows a lot of that. And you have to realize that there's things that you can be thankful for that you weren't aware of before. You know, you got to open your eyes and see that. And I really try my best to, you know, don't take anything for granted and don't take anyone else for granted, you know, like my grandparents and and my parents and my brother and my sister and my in-laws and all them, you know. You know, I really try and reach out to people on a daily basis and just seeing what's up, seeing how they're doing. You know, you don't got to go in a full conversation with them to see how they're doing. You know, a lot of people that means the world to. So you never know whose day you might make just by reaching out to them. But yeah, I give thanks every day. And, you know, I do love, I love the Thanksgiving day. You know, it's filled with football and food and, you know, what kind of guy doesn't like that? So I like to enjoy it. You know, I actually have to work today. So I'm blessed that uh, my family does it early. So then that way I can partake in it. You know, they're not waiting until, I think they're doing it at like 11. So, uh, so then that way I can, I can join and I can eat with them and just sit and relax with them and talk with them and, you know, just be around them. And that's really all it's about. Just spending that time that you don't really do every other day with your family. So, but what brought Thanksgiving together? What brought it together? So like, why do we eat around these certain foods and, and why do we do all this? So the first Thanksgiving was in 1621. You know, uh, I believe, so the pilgrims and... I don't think it has the tribe... Oh. So it was when the governor, William Bradford, organized a celebratory feast and invited a group of fledgling colonies, Native American allies, including the, I'm going to butcher this, Wampanoag Chief Massasoit. So then he brought his, uh, his, what do they call it, tribes, I guess? They brought his tribe, and then that was called the first Thanksgiving. And there's no record of what they actually had, but if you think of back then, like, you could probably think about what they had, you know, they probably had, like, herbs and spices that, uh, the pilgrims brought over on the boat or whatever, and, you know, the Native Americans had, you know, venison and berries and corn, I'm sure they had a lot of that, you know, uh, don't know why we have turkey and stuffing and cranberry sauce, I don't know, don't know why any of that, but, uh, they wanted to give thanks for, you know, the, the fruits of their labor and, you know, because everyone worked together to do stuff, you know, this is before all the bad stuff happened, you know, and if you don't know the, the real story of like pilgrims and Native Americans, you might want to look it up, (laughs) but in this particular one, like there was an actual dinner where They came together to give thanks because of all the hard work they put in and they worked together to do something and, and yeah, and then, and they just, you know, broke bread and they shared a dinner with each other and did stuff like that. You know, Native Americans had different, uh, things they use as spices and they had different cooking methods And, you know, there's no record of really what the pilgrims brought or gave to it. But they also had, you know, they had a, they had a hard time. 
coming over on their boats, you know. A lot of people on the boats didn't make it. I believe everyone on the Mayflower made it. But all the other boats, I don't think they uh I don't think they all survived. But that was Thanksgiving and you know, it was declared a national holiday when Abraham Lincoln declared it, you know, it was <laughs> I was listening to something and they were talking about they're like, man, I can't, I can't believe like we missed out on Abraham Lincoln, man, because he freed the slaves and he made Thanksgiving a national holiday. Like he's got to be our best, best president, you know, but, but I don't know. Thanksgiving is, a. Uh, I don't know if it's fun. I mean, it's not like Christmas. Christmas has a different feeling to it. I don't know what it is. It's something about it. It's something about Christmas that just makes it, makes people more happy, you know? And there's a lot of people going around saying, like, people need Christmas more than ever right now. You know, we just need, we need Christmas. We need this happiness. We need something to spark a flame to us because we're all fatigued from COVID. We're all tired of it everyone we're all experiencing the same things and some of us are worse than others but it's tough man but there's there's something to look look forward to and you know help is on the way and all we can do is you know put our heads down and get through it but Anyway, to other news, there's uh, park hopping is coming back to Disney in January. I'm excited about that, even though there's other rules to it. I think uh, I think it's like more of a trial run. It's more of like a test run to see how it's going to go. You know, they have to add those rules to it. You can't just like let things go willy nilly and all over the place. You know, you got to have structure to it for Disney World to stay open. So I understand that. And I get it, you know. It's why we decided not to go because we know they're dealing with all these things. I don't want to have to be there through all that. You know, I know it's nice to be able to go and stuff, but I don't know. I just can't be there. I can't wear a mask there. I can't. It's going to ruin everything for me. And I don't know. It's just not It's not my thing. But I'm glad they're doing what they're doing because... That way we can get to a place where I can go back and and then we can just do what what we used to do what blah, 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 what we used to do there. So I'm excited. I'm excited that they're implementing that and I'm excited that they're just focused on moving forward. And if anyone doesn't know, so SpaceX is the uh, creation of, you know, Elon Musk. And I believe uh, Trump wanted to have his own little, like, group sent to space. And and uh, so when you go to space, you want to take something that can test the zero gravity, you know, because you're still, you want to see if you've hit that, that mark yet, I guess. So a lot of people take something crazy, like the last two guys that went, they took uh, a doll that their kid picked out, and plus they get to have something that they're, they're, you know, in memory of their kid, and so this time they took a baby Yoda, they took the child, they took the child to space, which is pretty cool, honestly, I mean... I don't know what else you do with it. <laughs> I mean, you take pictures of it, you know, and post pictures with it. But it's pretty cool, you know, the picture that they show. They they show the Baby Yoda just floating. So I did want to mention, you know, last week I had my former uh, youth pastor on. And he said something, well, well before that, he t- we talked about... If 
with all this stuff that's going on, with people dying, with people in the hospital, you know, it's tough for people to believe in God and to believe that there is a God. And if so, why is he allowing these things to happen? And and I clipped it and put the clip out on social media. And I actually got someone that messaged me and it was pretty cool to say, to see that, uh, you know, they were looking all over the place for an answer for that. You know, they said that he was searching the Bible and searching online, but just get, didn't get an answer that he was really looking for. And he came across my clip and he was like, that's what I needed. So I'm not sure if it was a bad thing or a good thing, but if it's what he needed, you know, and I, and that reached someone, that's what I'm trying to do, man. You know, I'm trying to make these things meaningful. I'm trying to bring people on that have something to say and that can give you guidance to whatever you're searching for in life. That's all it is. Whatever you have questions about. And that's why I encourage questions all the time. Because you never know who's going to have a correct answer to that. Or the answer that you're looking for. But I thought that was really cool. That, uh. That someone came across that and that it meant something to them and then that it reached them in the way that I'm trying to, you know, reach people. But yeah, so another thing that we talked about in that conversation, and if you haven't listened to it, you can find it anywhere on those, the listening platforms or anywhere on YouTube. Um, under Strong Tower Podcast. So another thing Mike said was that we're too focused on the future and not enough on the present. Yeah, so a lot of times we get too focused on what's next that we forget what's now. Mm. So I think that kind of hit everyone that's probably listened to this or to that episode because I know it hit me like a ton of bricks because that mean I mean I've had moments in my life that it was that was exactly like that and uh, so I got to thinking I was like okay so so what do we what do we do then so if we're too focused on what's next You know, because you want to be, you want to be focused on your future, right? Because you want to do what's best, what's best for you and what's best for your family. So and that's in the future. But then you also want to be there for the people that need you now and to do the things that you need now. You don't want to get too caught up in the things, you know, that you're working on. So what I came up with was balance how you work for your future with how you live your present. There's got to be that balance. You know, because I think if you do a little too much, if you're if you're focused on too much in the future, you're leaving your present behind. And if you leave your present behind, you're not going to have anyone to share it with in the future. Even if you get to where you want to get to, you know, I had that happen in my own life where I was so focused in the, in the, and what I was trying to do, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to make this future that I thought like, if I let go of it, it's going to slip away. But really it takes time. So that's why it's okay to live in the present, you know? Do something here and there for your future, but your time's going to come. If you stay consistent with it and you keep moving with it, you know, if you're working on it all day and all night, 
that doesn't mean it's going to come any quicker, man. You're just going to lose a lot of what's already in front of you. You know, I heard a saying that they call it the present because it's a gift. (laughs) So I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't make that up. I don't know. I don't know who did, but. But yeah, I think we need to just balance. I think you need to balance on what you're doing for your future. And. You know, how it's affecting your present. You know, are you spending time with the people in your in your present life? Are you being present in your family? Are you being present in uh, your work? You know, I, there's no problem with looking ahead. There's no problem with thinking about what's next. But the problem is... I think we do it too much. Like we're just over overdoing it. Because we want that thing to come so bad. And I am so guilty of this. You want it to come so bad. That you're trying to do everything you can to just make it quicker. You know what I mean? Like I want to reach my goal faster. I want to reach it faster. Blah, blah, blah. But there's a lot of times where it's not your control. You can only control of what you're doing. You can't control that. You can't control that end result. Control the work that you're putting in. And just keep the present. You know. Keep the people around you. Don't don't take that for granted. What you already have now. Because what you have now. Can affect what you have in the future. Or can make what you have in the future even better. You know, because imagine having your future and you just lost everyone that you used to have in your family. You know what I mean? Because you took all the attention away from them and put it on you and your goals. Then once you finally reach your goals, you don't have no one to share it with. You know, depending on the kind of person you are. Some people will care. Some people won't. But that's just life. And that was something that just really hit me. And I thought I would bring that up because. Because that's tough. You know, it's tough to want something so bad and you just can't, you can't control how fast you get it. You just have to wait and you got to be patient. And no one likes patience. But. But yeah, so. I don't know. That was a short one, you know. So I just wanted to get this out there. I want to say happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And, you know, just stay healthy. Make sure you go to uh, Strong Tire Nutrition, SDNutrition.com. We got Black Friday deals coming on Black Friday. And, yeah, man, I think that's about, what else? I think that's about all it is, man, and just, you know, just know what you have, and just be thankful for it. Everyone likes to have new things, everyone likes the next big thing, but just be thankful for what are what you already have and what's around you and who's around you. Because you never know, especially going through this pandemic, what can happen to them. You know, just stay strong through this and just... You know, it's, it's a tough thing and... That's why I think this Thanksgiving means a lot too. You know, as long as much as people want Christmas to come just so they can be happy and stuff, I think this Thanksgiving is important because so many people are losing loved ones, so many people are losing jobs and other things, but they still have their health. They still have the, you know, you think of the little things. Think of the little things that you have, and you have everything. 
You know, it may not be what you want. Everyone wants a big house. Everyone wants the fancy cars. Everyone wants the fancy clothes. But if you're warm at night and you don't have to worry about where you're sleeping, you don't have to worry about, you know, where you're going at night. Or if you're going to be cold. Then you're good. Be thankful. Don't don't feel greedy. You know, be grateful. Be thankful. You know, I just challenge y'all with this Thanksgiving, man. Just like people always go around the table and and say what they're thankful for. And people joke about it. You know, be, how about trying this year? Just be serious about it. Think about what you're really thankful for. Think about if you really, if you didn't have something, how would you live? You know, I, I couldn't have imagined all the things I have now just a couple years ago. I couldn't. I mean, honestly, I couldn't even tell you we'd be here. I thought I'd be like, we actually have more. Than I ever thought we would have. And that's why I'm every day. I'm so thankful. And I'm just. I'm just overwhelmed. And I'm hashtag blessed. And. I just think. I can't even thank God. Any more than I already do. And that's all I can say. And then we'll end it right here. This is Cody Francis. I met an old man. I said, Tell me your story. He took out an old man and wrote something for me. Walking on down the road And I watched him disappear like smoke And I thought I'd just seen a ghost Happy Thanksgiving, y'all Then I looked down at what he wrote It said, son, when you grow up you'll be fine You know, just grab your loved ones Virtually Air hug them He's telling you love them Because the little things will mean the world to them, you know Looking for the answers in your 
Thanksgiving, y'all. Trust God, train hard. Peace.